Yeah. Perfect. Well, welcome everybody. Um, thanks for coming out tonight. Welcome to the uh, Kent branch of the Ontario Genealogical Society's May meeting. Um, we won't be live streaming this presentation. We have been live streaming in the past, um, which allows people who cannot attend the meeting to actually watch online. Uh, but we are going to record it and then we'll just upload it to our YouTube channel uh, at a later date. So if you feel like watching, re-watching anything over again, Yes, Judy? It would be easier if you were on that side so that you're not in front of people when they're back up to see it. <laughs> um, so then you can watch it again if there's something that you missed. So anybody who's near, new here and has never been to the meeting before, welcome. Um, as I said, we're the Ontario Genealogical Society and we've been preserving and promoting family history for over 50 years. And there's over 30 branches all across Ontario and there's special interest groups as well. Um, we are the Kent County branch of the Ontario Genealogical Society, so we focus mainly on Kent County. Um, we have mentoring and assistance. We have newsletters. I'll have to change that because it's not quarterly anymore. <laughs> uh, we have monthly meetings like this with different uh, speakers and different topics. And we have a great resource library um, that's housed on the second floor of the Chatham Public Library. So if you've never had a chance to go up there, definitely stop in. Um, we have great volunteers. <laughs> we have great volunteers. Yes, we do. Uh, we have a branch website, and it's there. If you'd like to contact us, that's the branch email. And we also have a very active Facebook group. So is there anybody that's actually never been to a meeting before and wanted to share who they're researching in Kent County? If you do, just put your hand up, and if you don't, that's fine too. Well, welcome anyways. All right, so some of our announcements. Um, the Kent Historical Society, um, they have their upcoming uh, meeting, dinner, and music. I'm not exactly sure um, what the music is all about. Diana, do you know what the whole little topic of it is? Well, they're going to perform. The CK Singers. The history of some of the songs. Okay, great, and it's for it's open to the public. Um, Ten dollars for this one. Uh, that that will cover your dinner. Yeah. Ahead of time. Okay. Okay. Um, our our volunteers at the library do an awesome job, and we are only open Tuesdays to Saturday currently, but we are open Mondays by appointment. Uh, we did have a lady contact the branch that's coming in from Illinois. And she's going to be in the Chatham area the weekend of the 27th of May. So she'd like to come to the library on the Monday, the 29th. So if you're interested and you can help out that day, I told her I'd try to find somebody. And those are the folks she's looking for. Voss Berg and Van Horn families in the Harwich Township area. So I'll see myself or Colleen afterwards if you can uh, help with that. Our next meeting, we have Ann Fisher coming. Um, and she's compiled... Um, a binder that actually is in our resource library about C the history of the CK doctors. So she's going to come and talk about that. And then our September meeting, we're actually ho hosting a joint meeting with the Kent Historical Society. And since September is British Home Child Month, we're going to be celebrating British Home Child Month with them and having a speaker come down from Niagara. Um, that will be and it will be held at the Chatham Cultural Center. So that's where they hold their events. So we're having it on our night at their venue. Um, Colleen, would you like to speak to this? Sure. In the next slide. <laughs> All right, so one of our goals this year was to reach out and start to build some partnerships with other organizations. And we're very fortunate to be housed in the Chattanooga Public Library as one of our first groups that we reached out to. And what we're going to do is co-host a family history fair in September. We really wanted to do something this year to celebrate the uh, Canada 150. And we also would like to try and get some more people from the local area into our library. So it's going to be on September 9th. And we're going to uh, hopefully have some other organizations join us. We sent invitations out to approximately, we're going to say about 25. The library is doing some and we're doing some. I've already heard back from the Bicentennial 
the Dining Empire Loyalist Group, they're going to be coming. Uh, Lambton Branch is going to come. Uh, and the um, Buxton Museum has indicated an interest in coming as well. And that's just in a, the first few days that we've sent invites out. We're going to be looking for volunteers uh, to be present in our library and show people around, uh, as well as just to help organize the day. We're going to have some speakers. We have Steve and Diana Fulton down actually for our meeting the night before, and so Steve has graciously um, offered to do a keynote speak uh, as a speaker at that day. And uh, we're going to so we're going to need volunteers to help out with that. So if you're interested. Let uh, Cindy or myself know, and we'll certainly, trust me, we, we will get you involved. I also wanted to give you an update on the library, where we're sitting at right now. So a number of months ago, we started uh, the process of updating our library. And I think everyone was in agreement that it was pretty full. There were resources in there that needed to be removed, and we just generally wanted to clean it up and make room for new resources. So. Where we're sitting at right now, um, all of the resources that did not fit our criteria, we did come up with a both a strategy document as well as a list of criteria of the resources we wanted to keep and the resources we didn't want to keep. All of those resources have been pulled already and, and what's left of them is sitting on the table back there. Um, most of them are either fiction, they're older reference materials, um, there are some you know, where if someone has traveled somewhere to do um, research on, on a different country, you'll find travel books on those. What's left in the library is what we wanted to keep, their family histories, uh, vital records, so census records, marriages, you know, anything that's considered a vital record, and then local, information about our local area. Now, if you go in there, what you're going to notice is that it's kind of all over the place right now, and the reason for that is that Matt, who is our library intern, is busy entering all of those uh, resources into a uh, computer right now. And we're going to be uploading them into a new library catalog. Now, if you've been to a library, our, you know, our Chad and Kent library system, you know, you can go to a computer and type in what you're looking for and it'll come back and tell you if those resources are available. That's the type of library catalog that we're moving to. It's called uh, Vita Collections. It will also be web-based, so anyone in the world can search and, and tell whether we've got a resource in the library. And it's something that uh, the OGS has offered to all of the branches for free, so we're taking them up on that. So again, we'll ask you just bear with us until we get through this. If uh, hopefully, well, what we're planning for is by that, that uh, family history fair that that library is all back in, in nice chip shape so that we can find things. Um, in the meantime, walk. I had five visitors today and I managed to find everything. It took a little bit longer <laughs> to find it. Uh, if Matt's there, definitely engage him because as soon as we said something, he would walk right to the shelf and pull it off the shelf. So he knows where it is. And I would say that Judy, wherever Judy is, has a pretty good idea where everything is as well. All right. Pass back to you. Um, the calendar is floating around for those volunteers to uh, sign up for May, so please do. Um, the books at the back, they, as uh, Colleen was mentioning, um, they need a new home, so feel free to browse. Um, the newsletter was sent out last night, um, so hopefully you had a chance to look at it. And um, We sent it out using MailChimp this time, and that brings us into... Um, Compliance with the anti-spam um, for Ontario, Canada or Ontario? It's Canada, isn't it? Canada. Canada. So what that means is that if somebody doesn't want to get information from a party, they have the option to unsubscribe. So that's what basically, in a nutshell, is allowing you to do. So if you've given us our, your email, uh, we're communicating with you with Mailchimp now for the newsletter, for correspondence, for updates, and things like that. Um, if you, we don't have your email and you would like to get those types of things, definitely leave your email at the back. And we'll add you in. Um, okay, tonight's presentation. 
Um, ben Dawson, Dawson is from the London area. He's a member of the London Middlesex branch. Um, ben has assisted with the technical folks at the Billions of Billion Graves, has connected with the administrator of Canadian Headstones, and is an avid user of Find a Grave. Ben will discuss these cemetery websites, and he'll actually take us online tonight. So this is the first time we've actually had a live demonstration. So this is going to be exciting. So please welcome Ben. We just have to switch over the uh, PowerPoint. And while they're doing that, our volunteer for the other month was lovely Jean. Stick your hand in there, Jean. How many do we take? Just one. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Timmy. And our other one is Randy. So thank you to Cindy uh, and the branch for having me down. I, uh, I did this presentation uh, in London back in October. Uh, and it seemed to go over very well, so I was asked to do it out here as well. Um, I'll go through it. There's a lot to cover, so I, I, I'll try not to overwhelm everybody. Uh, it is a, a, a bit of a technical side because it is an online thing. And I'll talk about some apps you can get for phones even and stuff like that. So if you have a phone, you'll be able to kind of do that kind of stuff. Um, so I'll get started. So, um, Essentially, I'll uh, introduce myself. Uh, I've been researching my own family tree for about 25 years. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get involved with the OGS until about two years ago. <laughs> Wish I had done that a long time ago. Uh, I come from a long time uh, Canadian heritage. I come from up north, uh, got some Emsdale, Huntsville area, some Cardin, Goddard. Um, and one of my first experiences with helping others with genealogy was the uh, Random Acts of the Genealogical Kindness site, which uh, was from years ago when I first came across it. And I helped somebody that was very far away find some stuff in a local cemetery and took some photos and emailed them to them back then. And, and so it kind of got a bit of a bug back then, uh, but didn't really resurface until quite a, quite a time later. So pictures worth a thousand words. And this is what a lot of these, genial or these cemetery websites are about. This is actually an example of one. This is in uh, uh, Mount Pleasant Cemetery. It's about a six foot tall U. I thought was hilarious. So, uh, you know, it's just one of many, many uh, headstones that I've, I've done. These two here, as an example, were headstones that were buried about two or three inches under the ground. Um, probably haven't seen the light of day for about 60 or 70 years. And uh, I cleaned them up and took some photos of them for the, uh, the Find Grave site at the time. And uh, so I, I do a lot of this as well. <laughs> so, what I'm going to talk about. Tonight is, is what my goal of this presentation is, and then we're going to talk about the who, what, where, when, why of all the different sites we're going to talk about. Uh, I'll do a bit of a demo of, of Find a Grave, Billion Graves, Canadian Headstones. I've got a bit of a comparison chart so you can see the kind of the pros and cons of each. Um, I'll talk about the Ontario Cemetery Finding Aid, and then with some other sites that are available out there that you can use as well. So my goal is, is to give everybody a better understanding of the purpose of some of these sites out there and what they can do. Um, and the benefits and some of the limitations of them as well. And then, of course, to encourage volunteers, because most of them are volunteer based. Right? A lot of this information that lands on these sites, actually, almost all of it is, is based on volunteers. So, so Find a Grave, I'll start with. Uh, it was actually purchased by Ancestry.com uh, in 2013. Prior to that, it was a private site. Um, so it is actually Ancestry owned. It's an online database currently of 159, so it's gone up about 7 million since October. Uh, memorials for the purpose of genealogical research and to provide a virtual, you know, virtual cemetery type experience for, for people to check out. Um, that's the website address for it, which I, I can, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll give Cindy a copy of my presentation so she can get this information out to you as well. So it was originally created in 1995 by a guy by the name of Jim Tippin. Uh, who basically was having a hard time finding any kind of uh, famous people in, in cemetery. So that's originally what the purpose of the site was to catalog famous people. And uh, it kind of grew into a much bigger project than that. Um, the uh, information that's on Find a Grave, if anybody uses Ancestry or uses um, uh, Family Tree Maker, is what really results in some of those shape unique hints that are in Ancestry. So that's where some of them come. Billion Graves is another site. Uh, it's actually uh, connected to uh, FamilySearch.com, uh, which is the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints. Uh, it's an online database of about 17 and a half or 17, 18 million uh, GPS-enabled headstones, and that's a, a key thing that I'll talk about in a minute. 
Uh, that's the website address. Uh, it's not as old as Find a Grape. It was actually created uh, in 2011. And again, it was a, a user-based website for people to be able to submit. And, and there, you know, it's a competition between these things. Because who, who can have the most information? Uh, also, uh, this information ends up being shaky on ancestry and stuff. So a lot of ancestry does pull a lot of information from these sites. They have partnerships with them to get this information. I apologize if stuff pops up. It's this is my computer, which is a, anyway. So Canadian headstones, a little bit different in this one. It's actually more of a, it started as more of a private, it's a, a non-profit organization. Uh, it is Canadian only, so it focuses on Canadian um, cemeteries specifically. Uh, they got about 1.7 million gravestone photos recorded right now, which as you can see has gone up a bit since my last presentation in October as well. And of course the website, uh, this one was started in 2009 by a gentleman by the name of Jim McCain. So if anybody's either met or heard of Jim McCain, he's actually a member of the OGS. Uh, he's been an executive with a few different branches over the years. And I've spoken to him a few times in preparation for this presentation and you know a bit about their website and, and where it's going and, and what's, uh, what's happening with it. And I'll talk about some cool things that's coming. And again, uh, ends up as Shakely <laughs> and Ancestry and uh, Family Tree Maker. So what I'm gonna do, if this all works well, I'm gonna show you uh, a live demo of, of Find a Grave and a couple of the other sites as well. So I'll start with Find a Grave. Is, is everybody using these sites now or, or in some way? I'm sure I'm sure they are. It's pretty popular. <coughs> you have to be a member to use them. <coughs> no, Find a Grave is a completely free site. So is Billion Graves. Kind of. I'll explain that in a sec. And of course, um, uh, Canadian Headstones is also free. They're all free based. Can they cover the world or just Canada? Uh, all but Canadian Headstones covers the world. Okay. Um, I, if, if you're on Find a Grave long enough, you'll, you'll realize there's a lot of American content yes. They're really big on, uh, on genealogy down in the States, so it's um, going to be very popular down there. So, Find a Grave. Um, I'll go right to the home page here. So, this is basically what happens when you. Log in, and, and of course, I would encourage anybody to set up an account and get uh, get logged in with your account. Um, that way, you can do a little bit more things. If you want to be able to volunteer and submit photos and all that kind of stuff, you do have to have an account. So this is basically what happens when you land here, and you'll see that you can uh, search the site. Uh, you can search for a cemetery. You can add burial records. Um, this on this side is all what the original site started. All the famous grave and all that stuff as well. Um, so I'll kind of show you some of the. Some of the things that are on here. So if you if you go to search, for example, you get like a basic search form, and you can uh, type in the name. So uh, this is my grandfather. Um, I'll start in Canada. It has the full list of countries. However, right now, anyway. There's not a list of provinces, so searching for something in Canada is a little bit more. You're going to get a lot of stuff come up because you're looking at all of Canada. I'll show you a bit of a, a easy way around that in a minute. I'm going to search. I must have spelled something wrong. Oh, right here it is. So, two people pop up, pop up. This is the one I'm looking for. And so this is essentially what you see when you get to somebody's memorial. Um, so you see the full name, you can even have like, um, uh, there's a, a field for nicknames even, uh, birth, death information, location if you have it. So what you're going to notice, the first thing you're going to notice is there may be a little bit more information that's actually on the headstone in, in a lot of cases. So this is, I suppose you could say one of the downsides of the site is that people can be a little bit more free with what they're putting on there. So I always encourage people when you're using these sites, use the information that's on the, on the headstone as your you know, source information. Uh, if they have more information, use it as kind of a guide to help your research. You spoke of location. Yeah. Now, is that the location within the cemetery or the location of the cemetery? Uh, well, at the top here, this is birth and death location. Down further, there is actually the cemetery information. So if I scroll down, you're going to see down at the very bottom, it has information about the actual cemetery where it is. Um, so give you the, where the plot is in the cemetery. Yeah. So you've got the ability to link to other people. Uh, other family members, so this is actually a link to their apparently uh, his parents. So if you click on them, they'll take right to the even if they're not in that cemetery, it should take you to their memorial. So again, it's quite easy to kind of navigate through 
uh, various generations, spouse and then siblings as well. Uh, the actual transcription of the headstone I've got in here. Um, I actually added this as a bit of a note because I did get some information from the local branch. So as I'm putting these on, I'm actually where I'm actually you know using some information I use from the branch as well. Uh, again, about the head zone and where it is, right down to the GPS location. If you took the photo with uh, a, a phone that has GPS capability, it'll record that information and it uploads that, which is kind of neat too. They're not doing too much with it right at the moment. And then it, this is actually created by me, so it tells you who created the memorial. So if you want to contact them. You can click on their name, it takes you to their profile, and you can email them. I mean, if, if, if this, if you come across one that is a relative of yours and you'd like to take over possession of that, there is the ability to transfer it to you, which is neat. And then, of course, you can have up to five photos for free. Uh, once you go beyond that, you have to actually um, sponsor the memorial, and they'll, I think they'll allow quite a few more. So, quite often, you know, a headstone picture, a photo, um, some people go a little bit crazy with this and start posting documents and all kinds of other stuff as well. Um, so that's basically how to find uh, a person. Um, of course, a cemetery lookup. You know, if you were trying to find a cemetery, pretty straightforward. I'll give an example here. Woodland Cemetery. So if we wanted to contact you, yeah. we went on your site and we wanted to contact you. Mm -hmm. We don't have to, like, I know what, I don't know what it is I've got on my computer, but I can't contact the family members because I have to pay a fee. On this uh, site, if I'm, if you're a registered member and somebody's trying to get a hold of you because you took the photo or they want access yeah. to that in the world, there is actually like a, a messaging system in this. So you can actually post messages back and forth to each other. Uh, and depending on the preferences of the person in the profile, that you might actually have their email address so you can email them directly. So mine's pretty much a public profile, so you could get my email address right off my profile. So when Bobby and I've just seen somebody's strange name come up, you don't know them, just you figure it has something to do with right. know, genuine. Yeah, I mean, I've transcribed so many headstones that I'm bound to have transcribed many that are not my family, obviously, yeah. mm -hmm. just because I'm going through cemeteries and doing right. this. But uh, And if somebody requests ownership so that they can manage it and do whatever they want with it, add additional photos, whatever, right. um, I, I usually transfer it over them. I mean, the general rules of the site is if you're a direct relative of the person and you request it from the, mm -hmm. the owner, they'll, they should do it. There are exceptions, though. Some people are a little But lots of them it. aren't the relatives, are they? They're right. the volunteers. That are exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> now, so, I would say if you were doing an email, in your email subject matter, you say yeah. such and such family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they will think you're not spam. And the other thing I'll show you in a second, there is the ability to submit edits. So if you see uh, a memorial that you want to add more information to or add a photo or other things, you can actually submit edits. So if I search for Woodland Cemetery in Canada, you know, I get a list of about uh, 10, uh, so you can search through them. Uh, this is the one I'm looking for, so I go right to Woodland Cemetery as an example. There's about 11,000 memorials, I guess you could say, uh, of which 68% are photographed. That's not even near done yet. There's a lot more to do. Um, it talks about photo requests. So people that know there's somebody there that have created a memorial, but they don't have a photo because they maybe live far away, they can actually send photo requests, and so if you're a local volunteer, it will send you an email, like you can tell it whether you want to be a volunteer, and it'll send you an email saying so-and-so wants a photo, if you're willing to take a picture, go out and take it. As soon as you take it, it uh, uploads it, of course, and it lets them know that the photo's been added. So it's it's a really kind of a neat way to uh, expand on that random act of genealogical kind of site that I was talking about. Um, so that's finding a headstone, uh, or sorry, finding a, a cemetery. Um, profile. So if I go up to, if I click on my name over here, look at that, I guess. So you can see a bio of me, you can see some stats on mine on the site, all the stuff that I've done. I've got some virtual cemetery, so I like to, uh, I, I don't do a lot with this yet, but uh, if you want to kind of collect your like relatives in one list, you can create a virtual cemetery. So even if there are multiple cemeteries, you can add them to a, a virtual cemetery. And so it's, they're all collected together, which is kind of neat. Uh, and then you can actually link to other people that you uh, deal with a lot. Like I've got a few friends on here, so I can connect with them pretty quickly. And then, of course, there's this messaging system back and forth. So I get a lot of messages from people, you know, thanks for doing this and that and, and whatnot. Now, it shows me right now that I have 27 edits. So I've got uh, people that are interested in adding or changing information on the uh, memorials that I've got. So, for example, here's the uh, memorial. 
Uh, right now I've got birth date is unknown and they've offered a birth date. They may not have been on the headstone, but they happen to know what it is. This is where it becomes a little, you know, tricky because I'm assuming that person knows that person or is a family member. And so you kind of go through these pretty carefully as you're editing. Um, I have actually declined some just because I have other information otherwise. So it's it's a it's a collaborative thing with people. So um, I have a question. Yeah. I had a, a distant cousin request. I, I do find grief. Um, my mother-in-law's obituary to be posted on there, but there are living people listed in that. So I didn't yes. feel it was appropriate. Yeah. So you gotta have to be careful about that. And there are if you if you read the. Uh, uh, I don't know, so under the help and stuff like that, there's a lot of information on what you should and shouldn't do on the site. And they do mention that. Um, my personal opinion on it as, as a contributor is I try to leave out information on anybody that's living. So if somebody sends me an obituary and says, can you please post this in the bio, I'll ask them to revise the obituary to admit anybody that's living. So that's where it becomes kind of a give and take, yeah. right? I, did, I just did post And I've, I've seen some battles on this site over stuff like that, too. So. Play with it and, yeah. yeah. So this is actually, I, I click on contributor tools. So as a contributor, again, I can uh, I can actually click on photos to transcribe. And actually, that's where people have uploaded just a bunch of photos and haven't done any transcription. So I can just go on and transcribe photos that people have already uploaded. So it's the ability to do that. Um, I'm a photo volunteer, so you can register for that if you want to. Um, down at the bottom here, which is kind of neat, you can, uh, scrapping I don't really use much, but if I have a collection of symmetries I use a lot, you can save symmetries to your favorites list, right? So I click on, on edit, and I, or I, I go to that, and I can have a list of my symmetries. Same thing with the virtual symmetries. Um, and that's kind of the gist of, of that. Does anybody have a cell phone here, smartphone? Okay, so, <laughs> ask. You know, I, I, I got to judge the crowd, right? So, uh, so what they've done is uh, here with me here. It uh, stretches it out here as I'm doing this. So, here we go. So this, I'm gonna make it a little smaller. My cell phone. So, uh, all right. So they have a find a grave app. They made it very simple. In fact, they put a lot of money into putting this together, and uh, it's been kind of a focus uh, over the last couple of years to to get it going and updated. So it's it's a lot like the website. Um, you can search for a memorial. Um, again, type in the information you want to search for. Hit search. You know, and you get the same memorial on your phone as you would get on your computer at home, uh, including with all the uh, photos that you can uh, click on it and zoom in and all that cool stuff. So if you're walking through a cemetery and you've got this mobile app on your phone and you're looking for something, it's, it's a really handy way to quickly locate something. Uh, and then, the, again, the whole information on the bottom, all the notes and uh, you know, who's owned by it and stuff like that. So that's searching for a memorial. Very similar if you're searching for a cemetery, but one additional benefit of this is that uh, when you're searching, it does know your current location if your phone's got GPS. So uh, it is a lot more accurate looking for a cemetery on this than it is on the, on the website, which is kind of neat. Um, and it right down to like provinces, counties, and stuff like that. Um, you can submit uh, information. So once you go to a, a cemetery, so I'll use Woodland as an example. You can click on the memorials, and then I can click add. So here's here's the ones that are in there already, and you can click on this one. It says you know all or with photos or uh, without photos, or if you just want to be one of those people that goes along and helps, uh, this is the option for uh, where there's requests for photos. So you can try to do something nice there. But if you click on the plus, again you can fill out the whole thing here. Actually, I'm going to do this really quick. Um, Take one for me here. Birth dates. We'll go back a few years. And then we'll go down to death dates. And again, I'm not going to fill in everything here. 
and then I hit create at the top. So that has been created. So there's no photo, but again, if this is my camera or my phone, I can say take a photo. And I just, you know, snap a photo with my, uh, my camera. And then it gives me the option of OK and then I'll upload that for you for So you can do everything right from here if you want to. For me, it's a bit time to do it that way. Uh, however, as a volunteer, I used to take my tablet and my phone and kind of use the two to do it together. So, so you'll, you'll see people walking through the cemetery with their phone. I get a lot of weird looks sometimes. <laughs> Very, very, very um, on the actual website, uh, oh, it's hard when it's small like this. So. There we go. Um, so if you go to, um, I'll do this really quick. There's the cemeteries list. There's my list of cemeteries. If I go to Woodland, uh, and if I type in that one I just did, it's, well, there's one I just created. So it's there already, and of course, I'm going to add a photo to it or whatever. Uh, but since I own it, I'm going to delete it now. I don't really need that one. And then we look up for John Doe. Or they might be. <laughs> Certainly, might be. Adding a adding a, a memorial through here, it's just as easy. You just click on Add to the Cemetery, and then again, fill it out as much as you want. Hit go to the next step, and then you basically just add a photo afterwards, and you pull up your computer, or your phone, or whatever you wherever you get it from. They do have the ability on the site to um, do bulk uploads. If you want to, you know, do a large contribution all at once, and you've maybe gone to the cemetery and written everything down, and want to do it all at once. You can do it one of two different ways. Uh, you can either uh, click on where it says Add Burial Records, and then they have a quick submit. And you pick a cemetery. I'll pick one from my favorites list here. And then you literally just like fill the information, send, fill the information, send. And it's just one after another. And then you can go in and add photos afterwards. Um, another way to do it, which is what I tend to do, is I use like a spreadsheet that's a, like a bulk submission. They have a template for this, and you can actually fill it out. And they've got all the headers for all the different categories. So there is another way to do it if you want to get really serious about volunteering and, and donating a lot of information at once. And again, usually what I do is I'll fill that out, submit it, and then go take a bunch of photos and then match them up with the photos or with the memorials afterwards. So, um, so that's pretty much Find a Grave. It's uh, it's I've done about just under twenty thousand uh, in London area, and uh, photos about just over eight thousand. So uh, it's a fun project for me. Um, so I'll go back to my presentation here. Oh, I should mention too, I don't know if everybody knows this, but the Finder Grave is going through a big revision right now. Uh, this is the new Finder Grave site that's coming out. Uh, they're beta testing it and working on it right now. It's got a whole different look and feel. It does a lot of the same things. It's just going to look nicer. Ancestry is trying to just basically uh, revamp it to look more like an Ancestry type site. Uh, but one of the coolest things that you're going to be able to do with it that you can't do now is for anybody that uses a site and saves the information into their tree and tries to source it and all that stuff, <coughs> when you get, get to the top of a memorial, there's actually an add ancestry. And you can pull it right into your tree, right from the memorial. So that's kind of cool. And they are incorporating a lot of stuff, um, uh, like on searching Ontario right down to counties and all that stuff that's kind of missing in the site now. <coughs> I've actually uh, been chatting with some of the uh, developers of the site and uh, I suggested as, a, as one suggestion, a lot of people see cemetery headstones that have an age at death, but not a birth. And I said, it'd be nice if there was a field that you could put in their age at death, so it automatically calculates the birth, right? So you can get that information ahead of time. So that's why I'm helping out there too, so. Um, so Billion Graves, which is the next one I wanna talk about. Uh, very flashy looking site, looks really good. Um, it, it's very, um, it's because it's run by uh, family, or not, I shouldn't say it's run by family search, but it's linked with family search, they kind of support each other. Um, they do a lot of uh, promoting and stuff. So, for example, this month it's a million more in May, they call it. So, they're trying to get a million more in one month, and they've got a contest out. 
if you transcribe 50,000 uh, 50, in one month, you can win yourself an iPad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, if you feel like doing about 14 to 1500 a day, and you've got that kind of time, you can get yourself an iPad. Um, I, I, I set up an account with this because I wanted to try it out just to see how, how it was. Um, there are a lot of things I'm really impressed by it. Uh, it uh, does thing like it, it has like fields for like military uh, information that's on the on the thing, and, and it's very detailed about that too. Again, because I think it's more geared towards the U.S. I, I shouldn't say that really U.S., but it does have a lot of U.S. feel to it. Um, there's not nearly as much information on this yet because it's not as old and it's kind of getting started up. Uh, and I think that's where they're having these prize giveaways and stuff to try and kind of get it revamped. Um, it has, and I'll just go through the site really quick so you can see. So navigating through it, you've got the volunteer, which is where you would you know, either transcribe. So again, you can click on this and it'll pull up a whole bunch of headstones. You can go right down to a specific cemetery if you want to transcribe for a specific cemetery. Um, there's a really good help, uh, a lot of really good help videos on this site that, sh that guide you through the sites if you're trying to figure out how it works. If you're just going on the site to research and you're just looking for stuff, obviously there's uh, some great stuff here. You're going to notice there's two categories, free research tools and billing grades plus. So if somebody asked about paying for it, uh, there is uh, an enhanced account you can have, like, a, like a, a plus account. And it basically gives you some extra uh, features like family plots, shows you how close people are to each other with the same name. Um, global family tells you kind of where certain names came from or are or, or, or most found, uh, and some things like that. I spent the first month transcribing 500, I think you have to do to be able to get yourself a free Billion Grades Plus membership. Uh, so you can earn it, but it's a lot of work and, you know, to maintain getting a free one because you have to do it every month to maintain that free membership. So, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so if you're searching, uh, I'll do the same thing here. So it's very, very simple uh, search <coughs> fields. Uh, actually, I probably should have put in Canada, but uh, I think this might. There, it's a little bit funny. So again, there's there's five that it found for the whole world so far. I don't know how many more there would be. So again, if you got a picture of the headstone that I, I created this one, so it's just give you an idea. Oh, it's cutting off one side, but uh, your name, date. It adds a field for marriage date, which happened to be on this headstone too. So that was kind of a neat uh, thing. Find a grave does have that field, uh, but it doesn't display it in the profile. So for some reason, they obviously know to collect that information. I think more for the background for matching people up uh, for, for those shaky leaf hints and stuff. So you have the cemetery name, uh, grave site information, uh, nearby records, which is kind of neat. It tells you how many more records there are close. Doesn't really matter what name there. It just says there's seven other headstones that have been, you know, created around, and then it tells you how many people in that same cemetery with the same last name there are. So you can actually follow that through and search for other people quickly. It's you know, quick links, right? Um, so I mean, that's that's it there as far as that's concerned. Um, you can do a, this is kind of neat though. The cemetery map is neat. So this, for example, is London. And it shows you this map with all these pins on it. Uh, and it also tells you what the pins mean. So the blue is a cemetery without building grades, grave images. So they've, they've put the information about the cemetery in, but there's, no, as of yet, there's no mm -hmm. memorials created. And then there's ones with, with uh, 20, uh, uh, sorry, the, the orange is with some, less than 20. And then they have ones where there's 1,000 or more. I don't think we have any in, in around London anyway. but. Uh, we get around Toronto, there are people that have been working on some in Toronto. So uh, if you want to see how well your area has been done, this is a great way to go and, and take a look at the list of cemeteries they have, right? What is the cost for the plus? Uh, good question. So you oh, can, you know. oh, I'll, I'll okay. put that. It's around, it's around 60 bucks oh. a year. Oh, a year. I think it's per year. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. Um, Ballpark's good now. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's nice to be able to earn it, but I mean, to maintain it, it's, it's you got to kind of weigh out whether the extra features are worth worth the effort, right? Now, when you said about the military, you know, uh, um, do they 
Yeah. Well, because this links. Yeah, you can, um, like, for example, you know what branch of the military they're in? If you start typing in the information, it actually has drop down lists for the m multiple branches. So there is the ability to have a lot more information uh, as fields in that record, which helps people that are looking for all like records for certain branches of the military, I guess, and stuff like that. So that's kind of where they have a bit of an advantage here. Um, also, uh, so this site actually links to, uh, like I said, family search. So you can actually, once you've got a, a memorial created, you can actually link that to a person in the family search. It's like one world tree sort of thing, or one big tree. And, uh, and so that family search page will actually link back to this as well. So they kind of create that link, and, and it's kind of a handy thing to have if, you're, if you use either one of those sites a lot. So they've made a little bit more of incentive for people that use family search more, I suppose. Um, any other questions about building grades? One of the things that I was a little less impressed with uh, was when I clicked on transcribe to just go and kind of earn my free building grades. Plus, some of the photos that people take are awful. And so you, you have the option as you're transcribing to actually tag it as a bad photo. And it kind of gives them a lower rating and eventually they kind of filter out, I suppose. But uh, as we all know, some people, some headstones are harder to read too. Um, so if you take a whole bunch of photos and bring them back to, uh, or, or upload them right from the mobile app, which I'll show you in a sec too, uh, and for people to go through and transcribe some of those that uh, you can't see very well, it's, it's difficult too. And it doesn't matter how well you have your camera, there's some headstones that are just never going to be able to be read after the fact. You'd have to transcribe at the cemetery. Um, so for example, find a grave, what I do is I'll take my tablet and I'll do the transcription and I'll snap a quick photo with my, my camera or my phone. I'll take them home and, and I'll, then I'll link them afterwards. But I've created the memorial right on my tablet and uh, Billion Grades does give the option, sorry, they don't give you the option of creating a transcription without a photo. So it's always photo first, transcription afterwards. Um, which is a bit more difficult. I found, I found anyway. If you have trouble with your limestone headstone, <clears throat> you used to be able to use chalk to go over it. I'll, now I'll make, I think you have to use flour for anybody who's trying to. There's a lot of stuff on that, and I'll touch on it on the, on the end because I, I wouldn't say I'm a professional on that at all, but I know what I've read online and I know what I've read about certain substances versus others. Um, uh, as an example, I'll, I'll mention this now. So if anybody was watching the news last night in London, there was a bit of an exciting discovery. Uh, in Woodland Cemetery, they uncovered, it was actually a, a group of students, history students, uh, uncovered, a, I think it was at least 40, 60 or more, headstones that were kind of laying. They had been moved to that cemetery from the Scottish Cemetery. I can't remember which one it was. And so they've got all these 150-year-old headstones that have never been seen because they were sunk under the ground. And so they've kind of pulled them out. As I'm watching CTV news last night, I'm watching and they're like, pouring flour on them. And, and flour, unfortunately, if you read a lot of stuff online that I've read, it gets into the pores of the, of the stone and it can really damage them because it, it's, uh, oh, I would suggest everybody read online before you start messing with headstones. Uh, a lot of the stuff I do, I just take a soft brush and, and clean them up and kind of cut the grass away in the corners and stuff like that, which is probably fine. Uh, I also get a lot of weird looks. Um, I actually, again, you know, something that I do that helps out with these ones that are under the ground. If you go, if you see a headstone that has a, a main stone, but you can't find anything around it, uh, I have a, it sounds weird even describing it, but I have a um, clothes hanger with just a, about maybe four or five inches. I just kind of go along the ground and just poke. If you hit a stone, you'll know right away. Like it's, and it's, that's typically where they are. But, um, and, you know, there's a lot of opinions on it, whether people should be doing this or not doing it, but, in my opinion, if you uncover a headstone that has not been seen for so long, for, for genealogists and stuff like that, it, it is a, a rare find. And that's that's some great information for people. And, you know, obviously, the family hasn't seen it in a long time, probably. And I've had some uh, messages through Findergrave, for example, saying, I did not even know that was there. So they were pretty excited. So. Then, yeah. Um, in the past, I, in one instance, I used mud mm -hmm. to basically put all over the face stone and the person's name came up which you couldn't see before yeah yeah uh, but I don't think it would cause any permanent damage I don't think so I mean there's a lot of techniques um, they suggest you know having a spray ball water on it would really helps out so definitely do some research online like I I'm, I'm not really going to highlight that too much just because you know I don't want to give anybody 
bad advice. But there's a lot of and and you know if you're going to be doing a, a large part of the cemetery and be there back and forth for a while, maybe talk to the the office too just to let them know what you're doing there because I mean some cemeteries are a little bit more sticky about it than others. Um, there are some that literally don't even want you in there, so you got to be careful. Um, actually, I forgot to mention one thing. So there is another link that uh, a friend of mine showed me. So this is a, a, a private site that somebody's created for people that are from Canada that are using Find a Grave a lot. So it, essentially, it is uh, it links in to Find a Grave, and uh, it has, for example, this first one is cemeteries in counties. So for example, if I click on Kent County, it's going to list give me a list of all of the Find a Grave. Uh, uh, centers that are in Kent County specifically. So in the background, there's actually codes for the different counties and stuff. So they've learned how to use these codes to give you these lists, which is kind of neat. Um, likewise, if you go down, this is a, a map of the uh, cemeteries in the area. So again, if I click on Kent County, it should display a map of where all these cemeteries are in this. So there are some neat things you can do from this site as well. So that's a, a great, a great uh, resource as well. And you can do it for other provinces too. They just happen to have happen to have Ontario. So Canadian headstones. Uh, oh, sorry. Let me just do something real quick. I'm going to go back and show you the building graves. So again, if you've got a mobile phone, this is the billion graves app. Uh, so again, you basically just click on take picture. It basically spins your camera. You take a picture. You're going to notice that this is yellow right now because my GPS signal is a little bit weak. If I'm in a cemetery and I'm taking a photo, it will add the GPS location as soon as I take the photo. And so that's the big thing with billing graves is everything's uh, GPS tagged right down to the location where it is. So they really wanted it to be kind of a virtual walkthrough of where it is. So when you look at where it is on, on the memorial, you'll see exactly where it is. Um, the problem with this is you can't create a memorial because again, it wants to take the photo. So if I'm at home and I want to create a, a memorial for my mobile app, it wants me to take a photo and it doesn't know where I am, right? It knows I'm not in the cemetery. So <laughs> it's a bit tricky that way too. And again, you can you can search record, search cemetery. You've got a, a dashboard. You can, um, you can take photos and not upload them yet. So it actually stores them on the device. That's actually something that was a bit of a problem with uh, Find a Grave that I've been talking with them. Because on, a, on an Apple device, it actually has the ability to store the photos and not upload because it uses up all your data, a lot of data. So um, for anybody that's concerned about going over their data plans and stuff like that, uh, if you're an Apple user, find a great, great. Android user, not so great yet. But again, I think they're doing a lot of research. So, so the app's uh, very, very handy for building grades as well. Uh, Canadian Headstones. Uh, so Jim McCain, I, I had a good chat with him about the site uh, because uh, again, I, I set myself as a, with an account, tried it out for a while, and what I what I heard from Jim McCain specifically was the believe it or not the, the intention was not for it to be a um, a genealogy site. It's literally that was his terminology, used, and I thought that was kind of odd. And I think the reason why he came up with that comment was because I said, well, I was trying to point out some of the things that it didn't have that I wish it had, kind of things like oh, find a grave, like linking parents and and stuff like that. And he said, no, we want it to be a searchable name database and the photo. And, that, and it does that very, very well. Um, OGS is a, is a huge fan of the site. Uh, they, uh, they really like it. <laughs> so, but it does it very well. And what it does really well on top of that is um, making sure that the information is accurate. So you're not going to get that extra information like you see on Find a Grave or Billing Grave where people are just adding additional information. Um, in fact, one thing I didn't mention about Billing Graves, if I create a memorial on Billing Graves, I don't technically own that memorial. It's now part of the site. So if somebody goes in and sees what they feel is an, a mistake or an error, they can submit an edit, which happens instantly. It's not vetted or anything. So, so I was a little uh, confused by that because I could create a memorial, or I can go to somebody else's memorial, create an edit, or edit the information, and it, it is immediately edited. So it causes that problem where someone could go in and just start throwing out all kinds of fake information. Um, I don't know if that's something that they're going to change in the future, but it was one of the down downsides. This site goes completely opposite. So when you submit, um, pretty much everyone is, is vetted by people that run this site. 
So they're actually checking the accuracy of the information, matching it with like the actual photo. That's you know, it's 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 very good. Um, on the flip side, though, it makes it a little bit more difficult for editing. So if you're like a first-time user of the site, you submit, you know, um, you could submit an edit to your own, but it could take a few days, if not a week, for that edit to be, you know, modified. Um, but searching for stuff fairly easy. It is a nonprofit organization, so it's not really owned by a corporation like like Ancestry or, or Academic Research or anything like that. So it's a little different, and it is Canadian only. So you know, essentially, what you do is you, you go to the province you're looking for. Actually, you're looking for uh, donations because <laughs> uh, search for a head, uh, sorry submit search. You know, it's pretty straightforward. So if I search, um, I can look all of Ontario. You can go by counties, which is neat. Um, you can say that surname either is, uh, starts with or like there's a lot of, of stuff you can play around with in the search engine here, and uh, and then search for it there. This kind of threw me off, and I, every time I see this, it throws me off. But it's actually it's nothing to do with finding grave. Uh, and then you can search for cemeteries as well. So if you click on cemeteries, you know they've got all your cemeteries again by by county. Or by province, if you just want to do uh, uh, province as well. Like I've, I've already gone into Kent, that's why it's going. So it's a growing list as well. Um, originally, when I started using this, the only a couple of the things I pointed out, and this is why I wanted to talk to Jim, was uh, quite often a lot of the other sites will allow you to do multiple photos per memorial. Like you might have multiple sides of a, a headstone or whatever. And so it didn't really handle those very well. Um, but there is a complete new revision of the site coming. Um, Jim actually sent me an email to test out the new site. So I've been playing around with it. And you can do multiple multiple headstone photos and all that stuff. So there's some pretty neat stuff coming to the site as well. He has to work with a software partner that kind of developed it. So, uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with this one. So like Find a Grave, there's going to be some big changes to this in the next little while. I don't know exactly when or, or how they'll roll out. but. Uh, Pretty exciting to see so much change with all these sites, which is neat. Um, for the virtual cemeteries. So the only major downside I saw to this right now is that there is no mobile app, right? So if you're going to transcribe to Canadian Headstones, essentially you're going to go out and either write the information down uh, or carry around a laptop with you uh, where you have mobile access on your laptop. Like you have to have access to the site. So there is a, a, a bit of a limitation in that sense. Um, I mean, if anybody is using the site and has found a way to do it other than what I've just described, I'm glad to hear it. Um, so that, to me, is, is a little bit more difficult. Um, I don't know, being a, a, a nonprofit organization, will they ever come up with a mobile app just because you know, those are very expensive to develop and, and things like that. So. Now, are you allowed to upload the same photos to all three? No, in fact, all of them have their own specific rules about that, that you cannot take, and they all have their own different wording for this, take photos from another site. You have to own the photo, meaning you have to take the, have taken the picture. There are users that all of a sudden discover that their photos are being uploaded to other sites, and then, of course, that uh, trouble ensues. But if uh, you took one yourself, could you do all three sites in the background? You could, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean... If you want to triple the work you're doing, absolutely. And this is what I find so funny about the fact that there are so many different options is we're just duplicating work. Um, so for me, it wasn't about, <clears throat> I don't want to say one's better than the other or this is the right one for you. As a research tool, all of these are going to be what you're going to use because they all have different information submitted by different groups uh, that have different opinions on what they want to happen. So use them all. Um, if you have a... a a choice for for submitting, you know, play around with all of them, and then figure out what works best for you, or what gives you the most information that you want, and let somebody else worry about the other ones. I guess, right? So, um, so here, like here, like grants, like grandfather. Yeah. You took, but I've, you didn't take that picture of your grandfather, correct? That photo, no. That was from a collection of photos I had. So you're allowed to do that as well. You're allowed to do that. Yeah. So if you had a cousin, second cousin. Now removed, and they had another picture. Yeah, and I mean, if it's the exact same photo I happen to have within our family, I suppose they could if, if they have a copy of it as well. Um, when you upload on Find a Grave, it does ask you what kind of photo you're uploading. So, for example, if it's a, it's a headstone, 
there's a drop down with headstone uh, image or f like a photo of the person, and then there's a couple other options as well. So it knows how to sort them based on that. And I think it always you you can actually change the order that it actually displays the photos. So there's a lot of flexibility there too. I've used the uh, find a grave a lot. Yeah. But I'm just thinking about when we transcribe cemeteries, a big portion there's no headstones. Is that yeah. information in there? I yeah, on, on Find a Grave, at least, there is the option of creating a memorial without a headstone. Um, and actually, in the submission of a single memorial, it'll ask you, is it actually a headstone? Is it a uh, unknown location? Uh, is it a, there's about three or four different options. Break down to cemetery records as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can, there's a lot of different methods. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical headstone. You can create a memorial for, for anybody, regardless of whether it's a physical headstone or not. That's kind of nice about the flexibility of that site too, I find. Mm -hmm. um, again, billing grades being photo first, transcribe after, you have to have a photo of something. I think they're trying to work around it by having uh, like a default photo for if there's no headstone. So you do run across that quite a bit. One thing I did uh, this afternoon too was just put in Google to put the name of the cemetery. This is up in Bruce County yeah. in a small village of, called Burvey. There's about a couple hundred people there. It's just all the people there. And I clicked on my great grandfather and up came a picture of the stone itself. Yeah. So there are different things. But the thing that I, we haven't been able to find out who the parents of my great grandfather is. His death certificate was filed by a doctor, so we don't. We still haven't found out. I was wondering, are these cemeteries required to keep records of when the person applies for a lot and any other information on that? A lot of them do, and this is what I found: it is you know going around the, the cemetery one by one is one way of getting information. But going to the office of the cemetery, if they're willing to look up information or provide more like amounts of amounts, that's great. Uh, because you can find out who bought the plot, who, you know, there's a lot more information that is available that, other than just a headstone. So, yeah, this yeah. was back in 1882 when he died. Yeah, it's it's really up to the individual cemetery. They're all separate and, and some have more information than others. Um, but it, but there, it's worthwhile. It could be additional information there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. And and the Ontario Genealogical Society has a lot of information that's available as well. I mean, there's cemetery transcriptions you can you can get your, your hands on if you're looking for a specific person, by all means, that's that's a good way to start. Um, and, and they're available. Some some counties have made them available for free. Some have uh, like a small lookup fee for each one. So, I mean, there's a lot of places to start. And especially if you're nowhere near the cemetery that you're trying to look it up. Like, that's the whole point of this, is to create a memorial or, or some kind of a, something aligned so that if you're nowhere near that location, you can look it up anyway. I can look up ancestors that were buried in England if they have a plot and a memorial and find a grave or, or building graves or, or anything else, right? So there's a lot of purpose to this. Um, and there's a lot of people that are doing long distance research that this is one of the first places they'll start because there's a lot of information that's available on a headstone. You got birth date, death dates, quite often marriage dates. You can, if you, if you know what you're looking for, military information, um, it's, it's a fantastic resource. So, uh, and then if somebody goes as far as linking people on find a grave, you know, there's a really great starting point, you know, whether it's legitimate information or not, but it's a great way to start. The so. interior assembly finding aid now, yeah. is that used for compiling some of those combined records here? Yes, so that's what I was going to talk about in a second. So I'll get to that in a minute. Um, what about if a person's cremated and then, yeah. say, say your grandfather was cremated. Yeah. So you have a, so you're just creating a memorial. Yeah, for find a grave, that's all it really is at that point too. Yeah, it's a memorial. Cremated because there's no cemetery. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, no, my in-laws get cremated and there's a wall and there's a okay, so some birth and death tag on there and then. Mm -hmm. Look, you're yeah. in the flower bed next door. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> or over the bush like my son-in-law. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I created a bit of a, a chart just to give you an idea about these three sites. And I don't want to make it sound like these are the only three sites. I'll talk to them a minute. There's a lot of other options, of course. Um, and again, this is evolving too with the change of these sites too. So for example, record searching, they can all do it. Hints in major apps like like uh, like Ancestry or, or Family Tree Maker or uh, Family search, whatever. So they all filter up to those major sources. Uh, record submission, they can all do it. Bulk submission. 
So body grade does it very well, as I showed you. Uh, billing grades has the ability, but last time I tried it, it wasn't working. So I was actually emailing with their uh, tech team to find out if maybe I was doing it wrong or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, Canadian Headstones didn't have the ability, but I have a feeling they may be adding it in the new site. So that's something I need to confirm. So this is this is based on what I knew back in October. Um, record editing, obviously pretty easy. With Canadian Headstones, it requires approval. However, what I found out from Jim is that uh, if you submit fairly frequently, you can kind of get your account bumped up to be like a trusted user, and then you can go in and edit your own very quickly. So depending on how much you use the site, the ability is there, um, but you have to be a, a trusted user. Uh, relationship linking. So they have it on Find a Grade, Billing Grades does it because it's linking with Family Search. So it actually knows how to you know link people. Uh, GPS tagging. It's done. It's done in Find a Grade, but it's not really used much for anything um, yet. Anyway, uh, Billing Grades that's kind of the heart of their site, so that was an important thing. Um, obviously, a mobile app available for the first two. Photo size, this is important. Uh, and again, I think it's changing a bit too. So back in October, you could upload up to an eight meg file on find a grade. So you can get a much higher resolution or better quality photo. Uh, so in general, I try and take as high a quality pictures as I can and upload it. Um, when you click on a photo and find a grade, it goes to like an, a, a larger version of it. But if you click it again, it goes to the actual uploaded version size. So it can you can get really zoomed in on a, on a headset, which is neat. Billing grades doesn't really indicate, and I couldn't really find a limit, so I'm not sure. Then you had some had a, a a limit of a three meg upload, but it uh, it actually downsizes that, so it actually changes the quality of it and, and scales it down. Now again, their new site, I think it's changed. I think it's like six or it's either six or eight as well now. So again, they're 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 making a lot of changes. Uh, the contact of the users or the ability to uh, interact with other users on the site uh, was quite good on on uh, Find a Grade. It was a feature that was coming to Billing Grade. I haven't confirmed whether it's there yet, but I have a feeling it might be. And then on Canadian Headstones, when you upload, you have the ability of, of putting your email address or hiding it. It's up to you. But they actually have it so that you can see the person's email address if you want to contact them. So that's a bit of a kind of a pros and cons and comparison. So the Ontario Cemetery Finding Aid. If anybody has used it before, it's a, a website that's online. Uh, it is a, essentially a pointer tool. Uh, you can do a search at their website for a name, um, and there's some flexibility in the, in the search there too. And it will give you information. In fact, I think I have it up. Uh, uh, here it is. So this is this. I mean, there's really no maintenance being done on the site. This site was has been up for years. Like it's been around for a long time. But you're going to find that the information is a little limited because they haven't done anything with it for probably 10, 15 years, I bet. Uh, in fact, I've tried contacting the uh, the people that own the site, but we're not getting much out of them. So it's kind of a static list. So, for example, if I uh, search for my Cox family in Maitland Cemetery, <laughs> sounds like somebody else has got some. I was speaking to them yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so it will give me a list of anybody that has that last name in that cemetery. It gives you the county, the township, uh, and uh, the reference you see at the end, I learned more recently, is actually a, an OGS reference. So if you take that to OGS, it, you can use that to work with the, um, the uh, OGS transcripts to find stuff a little bit easier. So it's, it's a great tool as well. Uh, I kind of lucked out years ago when I came across this. Uh, back then, you could actually download the entire database. So I actually have the full database download, so I can do mobile searches on it and all kinds of cool stuff. So it's kind of handy. But right now, it's an online tool. So you have to have internet access to be able to, to use this. Any questions about that? Um, so these are some other sites that I've come across. Uh, SemSearch.ca, it's about uh, just under 400,000 cemetery transcriptions in 10 counties in the South Central Ontario. It started back in the late 90s. Uh, and then again, it's user submitted information. So that's that's not a bad site as well. Um, you know, if you're looking for stuff in other countries, for example, there's an Australian one that's just come out recently and it's quite good. Uh, and it's growing fast. I have a friend that uses this. She's got a lot of uh, Australian relatives. 
Uh, internment.net is another big one. It's a worldwide database, six million. Uh, it is run by a very small team of one. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I mean, it, you know, these kind of sites they pop up and, and they either do really well or they disappear. And, and uh, you know, <clears throat> sorry, I forgot to mention. Canada Gen Web is a is a really good resource. If you haven't checked this out, this is this has a lot of photos already uploaded. Um, it started back in 2004. Now this is not 18,000 memorials. This is 18,000 Canadian cemeteries with uh, transcriptions and photos in each. So there's a lot of information there. So that's a that's a really good one as well. So if you just Google Canada Gen Web Cemetery, uh, so these are some of the links to some of the uh, sites that we talked about. Some of the other ones as well. I can maybe I'll, I'll get this information to uh, Cindy and she can fill this out on maybe uh, Facebook or something like that or whatever. <coughs> um, but yeah. just putting that information on Google, the name of the uh, cemetery, would they be pulling that information then from some of these other sources? Yeah, like if you, uh, for example, like remember I said it's kind of hard to find stuff on Finder if you're Canadian because, you know, if you just know the name of the cemetery and Google it, quite often one of the links that will come up is the Find a Grave link for that cemetery and it'll take you right to it. So that's a good way, instead of searching forever on Find a Grave to try and find the cemetery you're looking for because Sometimes naming convention there, they're using an old historic name of a cemetery or something like that. So it, it can be a bit difficult. But in the description, it might have a different name of the cemetery, a more recent name, or 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 the or the opposite might have the horse historical name in the description. So use Google a lot if you're looking for a specific cemetery. Because they're they're all named differently. It all depends on who submitted that cemetery to that website first and how they named it, right? Um, I've seen a lot of historical names being used. So I got it where <coughs> say you had an obituary. And you have people at a distance. So you just put the name in. You knew that they were in London. So yeah. find a grave, London, Ontario, and I put the person's name in, and sometimes I get it. Yeah, yeah. The other thing, too, that is a bit of a debate as well is whether if you come across a headstone that has, uh, well, my, my, my grandparents were a good example. My grandfather just passed away last year. So I had a photo of my grandmother's headstone. Do I create a memorial for my grandfather? He was still alive, right, at the time. <coughs> So, you know, some websites have specific rules about it. Some of them encourage you not to. Billy Graves wants you creating a, a memorial, no matter whether they're alive. They, every name that's on the headstone, they want a, a memorial created. Uh, whereas Find a Grave is kind of halfway in between. Uh, uh, Canadian headstones would prefer you not to create it for people that are alive, uh, that have not passed away. Can't, there's only certain countries that have these pre-need graves even done. A lot of countries, you don't even run across that. It's, it's really just Canada, U.S. a bit, and uh, a couple other countries. That, that's a, a common occurrence. Ben, is there a, is there a site for closed cemeteries? <sighs> Not specifically, but if you search, like some of these sites actually have cemeteries that are no longer functioning and stuff like that. We were, we were talking about, the, about this earlier that we're going to do some searching for. It. But um, I can send you two of them now. I'm feeling really bad because like, on the air, we found a whole bunch of stones. And yeah. Quite often, like on Find a Grave, what they'll do for it is they'll have, like, for example, you might have a cemetery that closed and they moved all the interments to another cemetery. So they actually will have a cemetery for that, uh, like a, uh, an index for them in that, and it'll direct you to the other one. So they actually have directing. We have the stones and we, nobody wants them, so we put them by a maple tree. Got it. And we got um, another part of the road in the field. We laid them all down. Yeah, yeah. And the it's lady is still alive. Is, her grandmother is actually one of those. And I was thinking, I'm sitting in the car. I should get up there and try to start taking some pictures of these things. Yeah, yeah. And that, again, that's the point of these, is just to kind of get a photo of the headstone, get the information available to other people that might be doing research. Like, that's that's kind of the key thing. Where they are, where they physically are, really, at that point, doesn't matter. I mean, I think they might be able to find, you know, I think just those stones, I mean, I, I drove by those things for years. Yeah. Nobody in the neighborhood, like those families, didn't technically exist anymore. Well, in Find a Grave, you have to have them associated with a cemetery, I believe. Like, I, I, I think that's a good question. Because cemeteries don't exist anymore after 100 years when they're closed, the MTO builds over them. Actually, now that I think about it, you, you probably, there's a way around that. Uh, for example, if somebody's cremated and has their ashes spread wherever, they're not in a cemetery. 
So that's a good example. And, and Find a Grave does have solutions for that, uh, where there's no cemetery known or, or unknown, unknown cemetery, basically. So there are solutions for that if, if you've got headstones that are basically not in a, a physical cemetery. So, so these are a couple other uh, sites. Um, oops, I didn't mean to click on that. Close that up. Uh, Any other questions? I know it's a lot to throw at everybody because it's a fairly technical side of things because you're talking about apps and websites and all that stuff. Um, we're kind of getting to a digital age, these you know paperless world, so a lot of this information is being put online uh, and, and available. So I mean, there's You're a lot of volunteers. You're talking about random acts of, can of uh, yeah. genealogy kindness. Um, how's the new site working? I haven't used it. I used it a lot yeah. before. I haven't used that site in years. No. I, so I honestly, I'm not sure. Um, I know it still exists. Like it it's, was it's wonderful. Still there. I yeah. loved it. Yeah. And like I said, I had someone that contacted me from, I don't know, I don't remember where they're from, but uh, they had me look up a cemetery in, in London. and. I found half a dozen people, family together, and send them off, and they were very happy about it. Um, I also get contacted through Find a Grave once in a while. I had a guy from England who wanted me to put these little wooden crosses that he was willing to send me, like shipped to me, on a couple of heads. And he asked me if, because I'm in London, and knew I was doing all from the transcription. If you minded if he shipped them to me, I put them on the heads so I had on these military uh, graves. So yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to do stuff like that for people. Yeah. So any other questions? I think that's as much as I've got right now. I, I would encourage people to volunteer if you can, because uh, that's where this information comes from. So uh, in London, we've got a team of about three three guys, myself and two other guys, that are, are working on a couple of major cemeteries. Um, a lot of them have been done in the past into transcriptions for OGS. We're trying, but if they haven't been done in 10 or 15 years, I mean, they're very outdated at this point. So we're just going through and kind of getting them digitized and put online on some of these sites and also uh, at the same time adding photos because a lot of those lists didn't have photos so you might get information that are not in there because you know you might come across a headstone that has a certain symbol that's not necessarily indicated in, in a transcription and it could be a, a fraternity like a freemason or it could be this or it could be that uh, and that's valuable information i've started keeping a list of uh, all my family that are freemasons because i belong and so for me, that's important information. And if I come across that on a headstone, I make note of that and that becomes part of my research. So uh, it is a little bit challenging when you get into some parts of the cemetery that are uh, headstones of a different language, because uh, there's not really, the other these sites are all English. I've transcribed an entire section of Greek in, <laughs> in uh, Woodland Cemetery in London. And Google Translate became my best friend. I know what most names now look like in Greek. Uh, I've even started teaching myself a bit of Latin. I kind of gave up when I hit the uh, Chinese section of the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, a lot of these sites actually have the ability to upload the photos where you can actually have other people or, or um, find, I think it's Finder that has a very good forum, like a forum for other people. So you can actually post a message saying, I've uploaded this headstone and put a link to it. Can anybody transcribe it for me? And, and reach out to someone else to help you out. Or if you're working with someone that knows another language, that's always helpful as well. So. But I wasn't about to teach myself Chinese as well. So. Um, yeah, that's about uh, about as much as I've got. And uh, again, I just want to thank everyone for having me out. Um, if you have any questions, I'm around. Uh, just a bit of a tail end. Uh, for anybody that uses uh, Family Tree Maker, uh, if you're waiting for the new version, I'm a beta tester, so I can tell you a little bit, but I have to stay within the uh, non-disclosure agreement. So, uh, but yeah, I've been actually working with some of the developers of that program. So I, I'd be happy to talk about that if you have any questions. Very happy with it so far. Yeah. I'll let you guys beta test it. You just let me know where it's going to go. It's exciting. It's very exciting. <laughs> so. Okay, well, then. Thank you very much. Well, Thank you. I appreciate that. And as you said, you'll probably stick around for some questions. So, if anybody has any questions, and is there anything else that anybody would like to discuss or talk about? Did you say that this was not going to be on YouTube, or it was? It will be on YouTube. We are, while we're doing is recording it because of the sound issues and everything that yeah. was going on before. Yeah. And also, Ben was using the internet, and that's how we usually stream. So we're trying this. We're going to see how this works, just plain old recording it. If it sounds good. And unfortunately, the microphone wasn't working tonight, so that 
will increase the sound in the next one. But uh, hopefully, um, so feel free. I, I don't know when I'll get it up there, but it, it won't be immediate like the other ones are. So you're not going to be able to go home tonight and watch it. Um, but I'll probably send a message out letting you know when, it's, when it will be up there. But just keep checking. And then let us know what you think. Like, um, it won't be as clear as the other one was because the other one, we actually went from slide to slide to slide, right? This is just the camera pointing at the screen. So, you know, it, you might not be able to read everything, but if Ben's willing to share, you know, the links and things, I'll get him to send me the PowerPoint pages and then I can actually send them out to you so you can actually have the links if, if that'll work. So we're just trying to make it a better quality because the streaming wasn't wasn't so great. The sound wasn't so great. We have, just haven't been able to get the sound figured out. So and nothing worse than, you know, sitting down with your coffee or your tea and going to watch something and you can't hear it or it's all garbled. So we realize that is still happening and we're trying to work on it. So we'll get it figured out. Does anybody else with techie sound <laughs> that they know things? We're definitely... Yeah, here on time. Uh, I could have brought the speakers in and the microphone. The car. Well, there Didn't you go. Car. See? next time so other than that thank you very much for joining and uh we'll see you in june uh, when uh ann fisher speaks about um kent county doctors so good night thank you